continues on NBA TV with the Houston Rockets taking a one game lead over the Oklahoma City Thunder. James Harden with 37 points and 11 rebounds. Welcome back into our NBA TV studios. I'm Kristen Ledlow, joined by our NBA champion, Karan Butler. We're with you for all the post-game press conferences between the Thunder and the Rockets. And, of course, over on TNT, our quadruple header continues. <laughs> and we'll get back to that in just a moment. But, Karan, this exactly what you expected from Harden, especially with Russell Westbrook on the bench? Yeah, you know, I expected Harden to be extremely aggressive, but I did not expect him to have the looks that he was capable of having because I felt like it was probably going to be a little more easier to contain and keep him in front of you if you're OKC from a defensive standpoint, but clearly I was wrong. You know, Harden was getting all the looks that he was very, very comfortable with as you see him styling and profiling this in front of the bench right there, but he was knocking down shots. Great opportunities, uh, good defense. Better offense. You are right. The effort was there. That was not the problem. Let's hear from Coach D'Antoni after this win. Hey, Greg. Congratulations. Just what, what did you think of the, the effort and the intensity that you started the game with, and how did that affect so much of what you did for the rest of the night? Well, that's, that's our key. I mean, we have to play since we're undersized. We have to play that way. We have to be flying around. And once we play with that intensity, the speed that we're playing with, it makes it tough on teams. And uh, otherwise, they catch you on the ropes or going pound you. But uh, I thought the effort was out of sight, obviously, some good individual performances. But uh, as a team, it was great defense, and uh, we didn't turn the ball over. Kelly Eco. Coach, how much of what you did forced the Thunder to, you know, play into your hands tonight? I don't know if they play in our hands. That's they got to play the way they play. Like we play the way we play. Um, but we were just we were good tonight. And uh, you know it's a long series. Uh, they'll make their adjustments, and uh, we just got to be ready to play with the same intensity all the, all the way through. Um, but tonight was a good night, and now we'll start from zero um, on Thursday night. Mark Berkman. Mike, I'd like to ask you two questions. One, how important was it to do what you were able to do today, tonight, without Russell Westbrook? Westbrook? And secondly, how important was the little wrinkle with Jeff Green bringing the ball up, playing kind of a point forward? Well, he has that ability, Jeff does, and that's why it makes it so dangerous. Once uh, that gets James off the ball some and he can rest, but also Jeff can make plays. He's like a point guard out there, point center, whatever you want to call him. And yeah, that's uh, that's. Uh, uh, that's good. He was good tonight. He, he caused a lot of problems for him. Jonathan Fagan. In terms of executing offensively, how do you feel about the shots you were able to get, even when they made runs, and even in those stretches when James wasn't in? Uh, the shots are good. I mean, we, we've been taking good shots throughout the uh, eight games. We just weren't making many of them. Tonight we made especially in the first half and the first three quarters, maybe we made made them pretty good. But uh, I thought the shots are good, turnovers are the right spot, and uh, we just got to keep building on this. And I really feel like when we're on, when we're all right, if we're rolling, then we shouldn't take bad shots. It's just, it'll only be good shots. You made like 22% of your threes against them during the year during the season, what was different? Was it just better shooting or was there other things different? Well, Jonathan, you know we have a different team, right? <laughs> it's not the same team. <laughs> so, I mean, that's the biggest thing. We just are a completely different team. And it's the first time they, they've seen us. So, they'll make their adjustments. I, I don't expect it to be easy by any means. they got some great players, good coach. So, uh, we'll have to be ready. Thank you. Okay. Simone Ali. Mike, um, Eric Gordon had 21 points for you tonight. How important is that production on a night where you're missing Russell Westbrook? Well, it's uh, fundamental. I mean, we have to have it. Um, and Eric played well, and I think he'll even play better. But uh, yeah, it uh, goes without saying. He, even with Russell, without Russell, it just makes him that more and more important. But uh, he's an important piece that we have. Brian Bearfield. 
Coach, the way that the players were getting to the basket tonight, was this what you all envisioned when you uh, traded uh, to compel them to open up the floor more and have teams, you know, more afraid of you to be able to get to the paint and shoot the three pointer? Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's the way we have to play, uh, um, especially uh, with Russell on the floor. He's the best at getting to the basket in the league, and uh, we just felt like it's the way to go. And again, it's a long, long road, and we got one game. But uh, I do believe, and I think everybody in the organization believes, this is the best way we can play this group of guys. And then we'll see. Adam Spolan. Uh, Mike, on Eric, uh, before he sprained his ankle, you were talking about how good he was looking in practice. Was this what you were seeing, what he did tonight? Yeah, I mean, and I expect he'll be even better uh, as he gets more accustomed to his legs and all that. But, uh, you know, he's one of our better defenders, if not the best, and uh, and he can go to the rim, and he can shoot long three. So he's got the whole package, and uh, he's just a piece that we have to have. Hey, uh, how did you like Jeff Green's aggressiveness tonight? Do you want him to be this aggressive moving forward? And um, what did you think of that pick and roll between him and James when James was screening for him and he was able to get down? Uh, I think it's uh, I think it's terrific. Uh, Jeff played really well. Uh, he opens up so many other possibilities, getting guys shots or wide open shots for himself, and or just you know giving James a little bit of a break about how to get open. In a sense, James, all he has to do is pick and then pop back. If they don't switch, he goes to the rim and dunks. If they do, then uh, James has, uh, has the ball in a great spot. Andrew Chang. Coach, uh, you got 42 points from the bench. How much of a bonus is it if they can play this throughout the playoffs? Well, it's good. Plus, when Russell gets back, we'll have an even deeper bench. And, uh, you know, I have, you know, Ben's uh, been playing well only since the first of the year. <laughs> He's played well a year. Uh, and then you got Jeff and uh, uh, Austin. And so you add, you know, somebody back to the bench. We're, our bench is good. It's just trying to get everybody healthy and everybody playing at the same time. Kim Davis. Hey Mike, can you talk about your defense tonight? Is it um, and what you'd like to see done differently maybe in game two? Well, there's some areas that we can get better at. Our defense, I thought, was very good. Um, we could have done a little bit better job on the threes that they just took right in our face, make them drivers. And, but I think overall it's great. I mean, I'm nitpicking right now, but uh, I think for a long period of the game, especially first, what, 22 minutes or so, 20 minutes, it was, it was super. Uh, you, they're a good team, so there are going to be periods where you just can't stop them. But I think overall it's great, and we just need to get it better. And the last one, Simone Sandri. Yes, going back on the defensive effort, uh, the game seemed to turn the first uh, quarter when you went zone and was aggressive, but also very disciplined. How happy were you? How satisfied were you about the defensive approach and the, and the discipline for, for long stretches of uh, the zone? Well, actually, you know, it looks like a zone. It's more, I'm, I'm glad you said that because that's one of our monitors that make it look like a zone because it didn't. It's a switching man for man, and uh, but it should look like a zone. So uh, they did a good job with that, and um, uh, just we just got to continue to see where the weak spots are, get them better. And again, they're they're really good. I mean, and that's one of the things that by being like that, they're smart, and uh, we try to take take away any kind of you know, pick and roll plays or anything might cause a problem, and it's all one on one from him. And uh, we did a pretty good job of guarding one on one tonight. Thank you, Coach. All right. Thanks, guys. The Rockets take the 1 0 series lead as Thunder coach Billy Donovan is also ready to address the media. Hey, Coach, you've talked about, you know, you're not going to be able to take away all of their threes, um, but with 20 threes from them tonight, what do you look to do in game two to slow them down in that area? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think their their 20 made threes. I think it w w uh, was what they made for the game. Um, certainly, that's hard to overcome. It, it wasn't the threes. It's we've got to do a better job at the point of attack, especially guarding the basketball. Uh, I thought we got beat. We got put in rotations, and they found open open shooters and open players. And um, you know, they they were able to probably generate a lot of open looks because I think. We've got to do a better job containing the basketball off the dribble. Eric Hornet from The Athletic. 
Yeah, Billy, my, my question was actually along those lines. Um, how do you get your guards to, to do a better job of, of containing their guys off the dribble? Yeah, I think it's all the way around, Eric. We've got to do a better job. I, I didn't think – I thought we started to do it to close the second quarter out where we played with, I thought, really good pace and force. I thought we did that with about six minutes to go in the second. And we did it for about six minutes in the first quarter where I thought our pace was really good and we had a good mixture of attacking the paint and post-ups and, and, and some, um, some pick-and-roll penetration. Uh, and then we really had those lulls. And I think in those lulls that you're talking about, our inability to really handle the ball and guard the ball at the point of attack. And, we're, and some of it, to be honest with you, Eric, is just straight up one-on-one. -on -one. And it wasn't always James. It was we got beat off the drill by a lot of their players, whether it was Gordon or Austin Rivers or even Jeff Green, you know, getting into the teeth of the defense. And uh, we've got to do a better job one-on-one -on -one defense. And we can provide help a little bit better. We can show a crowd a little bit better. But ultimately, I think we have to do a better job collectively of really kind of once we take away the three, understanding that we're going to be vulnerable for the drive and we got to be able to handle that a little bit better. Next up, Steve McGee, Oklahoma City's News Channel 9. Go ahead, Steve. I'm here. Coach, what did uh, Houston do to stall your offense out here, especially in the first half? Yeah, I thought in the first half, like I said a little bit earlier, I think the first six minutes we played with really good pace and tempo. I thought we missed some shots. I thought we missed some shots at the rim. I thought Shea had a couple good drives early in the first quarter. He just didn't finish that he normally finishes. You know, we got to the free throw line a decent amount. I think we took maybe 17 free throws in that first half. But I think probably that six-minute mark in the first quarter to about the six-minute mark in, in the second quarter, there was a 12-minute stretch there where I just don't think that we, we got very slow. Uh, we didn't play with any force. We weren't playing downhill. We weren't really getting out and running uh, like we needed to. Some of it was we were taking the ball out because they were scoring. But we've got to play with a better, a better tempo and a better pace. And when we did that to close out that second quarter, we, we were a little bit better. And, um, you know, again, we were, we were trying to dig ourselves out of, out of, out of some holes. But I, I think that whether we're missing or making shots, we've got to play with a good pace and a good tempo and a good flow. When we don't, we get a little bit bogged down. Next up, uh, Joe Masato with the Oklahoma. Hey, Billy, you guys, you threw a lot of guys at, at James Harden today. I know Terrence threw the start, Hami, uh, Dre, Dennis all guarded him. I know you haven't had a chance to look back, but just first impressions, did, did anyone stand out the job they did uh, with that matchup? Yeah, I mean, I think Terrence did a really nice job there to start the third. I kept him in there a little bit longer. I thought Dennis did a good job, you know, as well. Uh, you know, Andre, I thought, had, you know, a, a really good defensive stance where they thought maybe he got fouled and he did it. And I told Andre, we probably got to recognize that with them, you know, on the officials about saying they were gotten fouled, you know, the next one they're going to probably give to him. And we got a little bit too close again. And, uh, you know, I thought Andre worked. I wanted to see what Andre would look like out there, and, and I wanted to put him out there a little bit earlier just to kind of gather some, some, uh, you know, some information uh, for, for Andre to see how he looks uh, against him. Um, Andre's played against him a lot. I thought all the guys worked hard on him. You know, listen, he's going to make some of the shots. The biggest thing is the free throw line, and we've got to not foul him. And we did today on a, a, a three-point shot, and we fouled him a couple times going to the rim. Can't foul. Uh, that's that's the biggest thing. So uh, I thought all those guys worked hard on him, and I think collectively as a team, as a coaching staff, everybody, we all we all can do better, need to do better, and uh, hopefully, you know, coming back for game two, we we can play a lot better than we did on on, on both ends. And just a quick follow up on that, you played 11 guys even in the first half. Typically, playoffs or typically rotation is tightened in the playoffs. That didn't happen with you. Do you do you like that moving forward, or are you still seeing who's going to work out there? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think you have to, at least going into it, just with the way the situation was. The first thing was, New Orleans, I wanted to play a little bit, so he picked up three fouls. So we were forced to go with Mike. Mike gave us maybe a little bit of uh, uh, stretching the floor and shooting. Uh, I think New Orleans probably got taken out of the game a little bit because of the fouls, so that was an added player there. 
I made a decision that I wanted to look at Andre uh, in the first half, in particular in that second quarter. I told him that before the game that I wanted to see what he looked like on because I think in game one we needed to get a feel or a sense of where he was. I'll watch the film. So that was kind of another player. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the normal guys, if you look at it off the bench that we've played, you know, the one guy that didn't play that we'll look at and continue to look at is Abdul Nader. But, you know, we played Dennis off the bench and we played Hami off the bench. We played Baisley off the bench and we played, you know, Nerlens off the bench. The other two guys, Mike was in there, you know, because there were some foul issues with New Orleans, and the other one was I wanted to take a look at Andre to see what it would be like guarding James Harden because he certainly has a history of playing against him and knows him very well, and I think it was important sooner than later to find out what that would look like. Thanks, Billy. Thanks, Coach. Last one for you here. We're going to go back to uh, Eric Horn with The Athletic. Go ahead, Eric. Yeah, hey, Billy. Um, Dennis and Jay looked like they struggled a little bit to get their shot. But what did you see from Houston uh, that they were doing to, to kind of make it difficult on them? Yeah, I thought they did a really good job, Eric, of keeping them out of the lane. I think you started to see Chris do it a little bit later uh, in the game. There are times the ball is coming to those guys, and they've got to shoot the ball. You know, they've just got to shoot the ball. And um, I think Dennis got hit there, so there was a couple times I think he could have shot it. I don't know if he felt comfortable shooting at that point. But there are times where they're off of those guys, and those guys are going to have to rise up and shoot. They're good shooters, and if they're open, they need to take those shots. Uh, but I think they were trying to get downhill as much as they could. There was times they turned the corner and got deep into the paint. But they're going to have to – listen, the faster we play, the more it helps those guys. The slower we get, the more it's a little bit of a challenge for us. And I've said this before, you know, they're a physical, strong, you know, team. Get off court those guys getting in there against that contact it's tough to finish but if you can get the ball ahead of their defense and those guys can get their speed and quickness involved they'll be better off if we can play faster and that's going to be a key for us is can we play faster playoff central live continues on nba tv after the break with james harden and the houston rockets taking the 1-0 series lead over the okc thunder the players will take the you know, defensively uh they through some things with you guys, which I know obviously with their different lineup might be a point of adjustment moving forward, but it seemed like you guys stagnated a good chunk of the night. Did, what did they do and, and how do you guys counter that moving forward? Uh, I think that we knew that their plan was to uh, switch a lot. And by then switching a lot, we need to, you know, we need to keep going to the post. I thought we were, we were pre pretty effective in the post. Uh, but at the same time, we had to play uh, Thunder basketball. We need to go up and down the floor and, and pick up the pace. Next, we're going to go to uh, Paris Lawson, OKCThunder.com. Hey, Danilo, uh, 29 points for you tonight, and you obviously were able to take advantage of some mismatches. What were you seeing in the game today that really worked for you? Uh, I was just trying to use the uh, the height advantage in the post and just trying to keep moving because the more you move, especially without the ball, and the more effective you can be offensively. And that's something that we did it pretty well at the beginning of the game, but we didn't sustain it throughout the whole game. Next up, Michael Kenny from Michael Kenny Media. You, uh, the team overall had a kind of a slow start, at least offensively and on the defensive side. What do you think needs to happen in game two to turn that around? Uh, I think that we need to play, of course, a better offense and a better defense. Defensively, we need to be better on those switches and better on the one-on-one -on -one defense. Uh, and also on the team defense on the weak side, being able to help and rotate uh, better. And then offensively, you know, we didn't we need to go in the post to exploit those matchups, but at the same time, we need to pick up our pace and uh, play at, at, at a better pace and run the floor better. Thank you. Are there any other questions for Gallo? All right, Clay Horning, go ahead with your question for Gallo. Uh, Danilo, um, is it, Living in the bubble, playing in the bubble, we expect urgency to pick up, energy to pick up in the playoffs. Is that a harder thing to do given the way you guys have been living? 
I mean, I think that the focus, bubble or no bubble, the focus, we are playing basketball, this is our job, and we need to be ready every day for practice and every day for the games. And so whatever, I know it's a different situation, but whatever we need to do to be uh, ready, uh, we need to do it. And Nick Crane from Forbes. Hey, Gallo. So with, with your offensive game plan coming into a game like this, knowing you're going to be the biggest guy on the floor, does that change your mindset at all? Or do you come into this game offensively um, kind of with the same mindset you would in the other game? No, the mind the mindset is the is the same. I just trying to read uh, what the defense is giving me, and so I, I saw what the defense was giving me offensively, a uh, little bit on um, you know moving a lot without the ball and and uh, and try to also be effective in the post, and uh, and so I was just you know reading the defense. Eric Gordon added 21 points and four assists for the Rockets to take Game One over the Thunder. Here he is. Hey, first of all, how important is it for you guys as a team to do what you were able to do the way y'all did it without Russell? Well, yeah, that's a staple. You know, we're a good enough team to, whenever we're shorthanded, we still got to find ways to win games. And uh, defensively really helped us tonight. And, uh, and uh, we really put the ball in the hoop. Uh, we, we, you know, really attacked them, really knocked down shots. And uh, uh, we, we had a good rhythm tonight. Michael Shapiro. Eric, you seem to really be attacking the basket early in this contest. Was that kind of a directive for you to, to really put some pressure on the defense at the rim as opposed to just beyond the arc? Well, yeah, it's all about playmaking. I'm going to I'm gonna continue to attack the rim or, or even knock down a shot. You know, that's the good, great thing about my game. I can, I can always attack the rim and I can always get off a three. So, uh, and I can always penetrate and kick to someone else. So, uh, I'm, not, I'm not really worried about what I need to do. It's, it's to continue to playmake and make the right decisions. Any other questions? Jonathan Fagan. It seemed like when they did make runs on that big lead, that's when you guys had some of your best stretches of the game. How, how much does the playoff experience that pretty much or most of that team of your team has, and the playoff experience you have together, play into responding in those situations? Well, it definitely means a lot because we, we've been together for at least four years now, and. Uh, you know, we know what it takes. We're an older veteran team, and uh, we know this is a game full of runs. And as long as we make the most runs, um, we know things are going to go our way. Greg Bailey. Aaron, congratulations. What did you think about the, uh, the intensity, particularly on the defensive end, and how does that affect you guys when you get that working? How does that lead to other great things that you're able to do on the offensive end? Yeah, I thought it was good. We can continue to get better and better. There's uh, a few ways where we can get better for the next game. And, uh, you know, we know we're a team. We know what it takes. And we're, we're going to try to make strides to play even better next game. Chris Paul was an assist shy of a triple double with 20 points and 10 rebounds against his former team. He's at the podium now. Uh, it seemed like the flow offensively just wasn't there for you guys. And um, you even seemed a little out of sorts, which we don't see very often. What what was it tonight for you guys that wasn't wasn't really what we've seen most of this season? Oh, uh, we're gonna figure it out. Um, it's a, it's a different team. Like it's uh, you know after playing there, you play a certain way the whole season, and then you have a team that switches everything. You know what I mean? So it's game one. Uh, we got to figure it out. You know, most nights you know it's a show or it's a drop or whatnot. Uh, that's why, you know, they are they are. They play totally different than any other team in the league. So game one, we fill it out a little bit and we see what we got to do. Uh, Paris Lawson, OKCThunder.com. Hey, Chris, with their ability to shoot from behind the three point line, how, how tough or, or difficult is it for you guys to balance closing out to them on the three point line while also being able to protect the rim and, and uh, protect the drive? For uh, them? It's, it's tough. They play like that for a reason. Uh, there's no secret to nobody. Uh, we keep talking about it. Eric Gordon is like a wild card for them because Gordy, uh, Gordy is so tough. You know, his ability to shoot deep, his ability to drive. Uh, we got to figure out what we're going to try to take away. Um, letting the other guys get going is what's tough. You know, everybody start feeling good, so. 
Next, we're going to go to uh, Nick Crane with Forbes. Hey, Chris, can you just talk us through the emotions of, of playing against your former team here in the playoffs, just, just a year removed from playing with a lot of these same guys? Uh, nothing. Nothing. You know, I'm an emotional player as it is. You know what I mean? I don't care who I'm playing against. Playing against my mom or them, I'm going to play emotional. You know what I mean? So, um, you know, we just got to keep putting it together and, and figure out uh, what we learned from game one. Daniel Bell, Black Sports Online. Hey, Chris, do you think you guys played at the Rockets' pace a little too much? Um, I got to still look at the tape, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, we didn't necessarily probably play fast enough, play downhill. Like I said, it's game one. We got to fill it out. First team all season, we didn't play like that. You know what I mean? So we knew it was sort of a fill-out game. Uh, I think we got to be a little better offensively and defensively. Um, and sort of try to take care, take some of the some of the guys away. You know, you let Jeff Green get going. All the other guys, you know, if you letting them get touches and get shots, then everybody, you know, starts feeling good. So we'll figure it out. Got two more here for you, Chris. Uh, next, we're gonna go to uh, Travis Singleton, sneaker reporter. Hey, Chris, what do you? What's your message for the for the young players on the team? You know, like Shea and, and, and Baisley and those guys that are finally getting some big minutes in the playoffs. What's your message going into game two for them moving um, forward? Stay with it. Stay with it one game at a time. You know, uh, think about the playoffs. Can't get too high. Can't get too low. Uh, just stay focused. Keep keep learning each game. Each game, we're going to learn something about them. They're going to learn something about us. Last one goes to uh, Michael Kinney with Michael Kinney Media. But Chris, was there, did you tell a difference in not having the fans for the playoff game? Did that not having them to be able to build off of, especially when you got down, were you able to see any type of difference in that? No. <laughs> no, just, just hoop. You don't care what's going on, who's there. You know, you got to hoop. Thank you, Chris. Appreciate the time. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Meanwhile, James Harden led the Rockets with 37 points and 11 rebounds in the win, and he's ready to address the media now. James, uh, even just going forward, how valuable was it in the first game without Russ here that there was so many different weapons working today and so much of the offense clicking today? Uh, our ball movement, our ball movement tonight was, uh, you know, excellent. I think we were just playing off the catch. Guys were. Uh, very confident in their shots uh, when open and then when not open, uh, getting off the ball, making a quick decision. Uh, you know, I think and I think we had a lot of lot, lot of opportun uh, shot opportunities that we missed uh, that were really good shots. So uh, we did a really good job of not turning the basketball over, uh, which would have gave them opportunities to get out in transition. Mark Berman. Things along those lines, how important it was it for you guys to get off the way that you did? Get a win like this without Russell. Uh, it's it's key. You know, we're not we're not sure when Russell's gonna be back. You know, so it's an opportunity for guys to step up and play big minutes and contribute to, uh, you know, big time games. You know, obviously, Eric and Jeff played really well tonight. PJ played well on both ends. I mean, guy, it was just a total team effort, and we're gonna need that uh, consistently from uh, you know each individual. Ryan Barefield. James, I asked uh, Coach Antonio this earlier, and I want to ask you the same thing. Is this the type of offense that you all envision the wide open offense when Clint Capella was traded? Yeah, you know, um, that was the whole reasoning for it, you know, um, creating and generating open shots, you know, for shooters. And, you know, we did that tonight. Um, I think, you know, we didn't get a lot of credit for our defense, and our defense was really good, especially at the beginning of the game. Um, and it's going to have to be that way. We have to, we're going to have to rely on our defense uh, to generate easy buckets on offense. And uh, I think tonight was a good start for us. So, James, uh, Jeff was able to give you 22 points off the bench. This is someone you were able to pick up this season. How impressed were you with his production? <laughs> Uh, I'm not impressed. I, I mean, I've, I've been knowing Jeff since I was a rookie, you know, as far as, uh, you know, being a teammate. So I know what he's capable of. And he's just, he's being Jeff. He's confident. You know, he's, he's making plays off the dribble defensively. He's guarding one through five. 
Uh, he's being a playmaker, getting guys shots, and he's just doing thing, doing things that he's been doing all his entire career. And so, uh, you know, with the big big pickup in the middle of the season to our team was huge for us. Jason Bristol. Hi, James. I know on TNT after the game you mentioned that you thought that uh, the defense could be even better. I know you haven't looked at any film or anything, but what what kind of things do you think could actually be better? I th- I mean, we got just off the top of my head. We gave Chris two open open looks, uh, you know, just dribble dribble shots, you know, that he hit in front of our bench, that we can take away. We can be better, uh, you know, with our boxing out. You know, obviously, Stephen Adams is you know a big guy. He's really good offensively. Uh, penetration, you know, knowing knowing who's on the floor uh, when they have five guys on the floor, but. Uh, like you said, we'll watch film and uh, we'll get better at it. In game two, we got to be um, even better than we were game one. Tim McMahon. James, uh, on Jeff Green, how, how much does his ability to handle the ball and kind of be a facilitator uh, take pressure off of you, especially with uh, Russ obviously not available? Uh, it's, it's it's huge for us. You know, now I don't have to just dribble the basketball up and. Uh, you know, those guards can, you know, kind of pressure me. He's able to, you know, dribble the ball up and get us in our offense. Um, Eric is able to do that. Austin is able, we have a lot of guys able to dribble the basketball up. Um, that's the beauty of, you know, being small. So as long as that ball is hopping around and guys are getting driving lanes, open shots, uh, we'll live with the results. Kim Davis. Hey, James, can you just talk about the pace tonight? You talked about the defense earlier. And you guys always say how the defense really dictates how you're able to play in transition. Is this the pace that you guys want to play that where you can be the most successful? Yes, yes. But it all starts like we, like I keep you know referring back to with our defense. Uh, offensively, even as these past eight games we were in the bubble, you know we had the, the number one pace. So our, our our speed and tempo is you know pretty solid. Uh, but we're going to have to rely on our rebounding and, and our defensive intensity and our communication to be able to generate easier shots. Obviously, when when you know when our half court offense uh, gets set, we still can you know get pretty good shots off. But I think in order for us to get even better shots, is uh, is going to have to be in transition, which I think we did a pretty good job of tonight. We'll take two more, Cody Davis. Hey James, how impressed were you with Eric Gordon tonight, especially after after the amount of time he missed with the ankle injury? Not really. Uh, Eric is more than capable. You know, he just battled injuries, uh, but he's one of the you know most skilled guys that we have in this league. He's able to you know beat his guy off the bounce, uh, create opportunities for his teammates, and obviously shoot the shoot the three at a high level. Uh, so he's finally healthy. He's finally getting his swag and his rhythm back. Um, and you know it's scary for him. I mean, it's scary for you know, defenses because they got to guard that. And last one, Mark Berman. James, you talked several times about Jeff Green. How much do you think that we're OKC off a little bit and him bringing the ball up, which they've never, they've not seen that before? What was the question? How much do you think Jeff bringing the ball up, and playing a point forward, with you not having to do that, might have affected OKC's defense? Uh, it, it can affect anybody, you know. If he's bringing the basketball up and I'm setting the screen, it's only you know a handful of things you can do as far as you can switch it or show, you know. So. You know.